Well, welcome to Get Vision TV, and we're here at the Miramar Cultural Center, and it's going to be popping this evening. We're going to be talking to the CEOs of, 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 of Grace Kennedy, of Western Union, and I'm telling you, the managers, the regional directors, because we have something great that's going to happen here tonight, that's going to be announced. I got a little peek for my viewers, and what it is, it's scholarship money. Yes, ching, ching, ching. And of course, last year, I was told that they gave a certain amount, and this year, they are going to double it up. We're going to hear more about it later on tonight. To my viewers, I love you so much. Thank you for continuing to listening and watching. Oh, let me tell you something. These interviews that are coming up are going to be awesome. So stay tuned to Get Vision TV. You know how we do it? If you can't get it, you can't realize it. Well, welcome to Get Vision TV, and we're here at the Miramar Cultural Center. And of course, it's Grace Kennedy and Western Union. Time of the year again when they give us money. Scholarships are being given away. And this evening, we have with us Mr. Michael Ranglin, who's going to tell us a little bit about what, about what he does for Western Union and Grace Kennedy. How are you doing, sir? I'm great, Michelle. It's good to be here. Fine. Tell us a little bit about your role in Grace Kennedy. Okay, well, I, I am part of the food division specifically, and I head the North American operations on Grace Kennedy's behalf. It's a recent appointment. Um, prior to this, I was CEO of Foods, and that covered a number of countries, including the UK, Canada, Belize, Jamaica, and Africa. Um, but last year, we acquired a company here, and it was necessary for me to focus on getting that company integrated into Grace Kennedy operations. So right now I am CEO of Grace Kennedy Foods North America and President and CEO of Grace Kennedy Foods USA, that specifically is the company that we acquired. So it has been an interesting last couple of months with this last year, Ju July, July 18 to be exact, and it has been a real interesting journey from then until now and it continues. And what's the name of the company that you're branding and marketing through with Grace Kennedy? Well, the company we acquired is called Lafayette Foods. Right. Um, what we did was we acquired the assets of that company. And one of those assets, of course, was the brand. So Grace Kennedy now owns the Lafayette brand. It's a, it's a comprehensive line of, his, of foods targeted at the Hispanic consumer. Um, a lot of our customer base is actually from the Caribbean, the Spanish-speaking Caribbean, so the Dominican, Puerto Rico, Cuba, but also wider um, to South America, Central America, and of course Mexico. So that's the line of products that we have basically gotten into and are now selling across the Northeast U.S. and parts of the Southern USA. Um, we did that in July and we spent six months getting that getting that done and then at the end of January this year we took over our own Grace products, oh. we took over the distribution of that. Mm. So the last couple of months it has been a, a lot of different transitions. We also changed the information system that was being used within the Lafay operation. So a number of things sort of one on top of the other that we have been doing. So we're really looking forward to things setting down. We know that our consumers, we want to make sure that they can find our products and that we serve our customers well and we're working day and night to get that done. Wow, amazing because as you know, we really want the Grace Candy brand to be here, footprinted here and we're glad that Lafay is really, well you have bought Lafay, Lafay did not buy Grace Candy. Let's have that for the camera one more time on our viewers. Yes, Grace Candy bought Lafay, not the other way around. So we are here. We are growing, we are strong, and what we plan to do is to cover the U.S. where it makes sense for us with the range of products that we have, and that is the that is the journey that has started, or that started last year, July. And we have with us Mr. Sean Mason, who is the regional director for Western Union. He's going to tell us a little bit about more about himself. Well, actually, I'm the vice president and general manager for the Caribbean region, and I manage 
roughly 30 countries in the Caribbean, so everything that speaks English, French <laughs> or Dutch, that's me. Wow, the scholarship this evening. Tell us a little bit about the scholarship. Well, we're bigger and better this year. Last year we started with $20,000 in scholarships. This year we're doing 50000 in the U.S. Uh, so, and we're opening that up to the entire English, French and Dutch Caribbean. So much wider participation pool. Last year we had about 200 applicants. This year, yeah, the sky could be the limit. Yes. Uh, we're also including or bringing a scholarship to the Caribbean region itself. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be offering scholarships through our partner, the University of the West Indies, $15,000 in scholarships to all potentially students attending the University of the West Indies regardless of the campus that they're attending, they'll have the opportunity to apply and be eligible for scholarships from Western Union as well. That is amazing and that's and this is really Western Union's baby and you asked Grace Kennedy to partner with you. Yes, Grace Kennedy, as you know, is a tremendous partner for us. We've been in business together tw for 25 years and in fact we're we're more than just you know, on the surface partners. In 2007, Western Union actually invested in the Grace Kennedy Money Services arm, and we are we have 25% ownership interest. So, you know, we're we're definitely committed to the Caribbean, and we do everything that we can to support the Caribbean and improving the Caribbean. Well, we want to say thank you from Get Vision TV viewers and from myself because I know what it is like to go to college and you really don't have any money. And you, I'm sure, have an idea because we know your story. Yeah. So this is really amazing. And, you know, many times we don't give back. Yes. And this is so important, especially the fact that we're giving back to the Caribbean. It's not only yeah. for people in the diaspora. Yeah. Well, I mean, we owe it to, to the Caribbean. I mean, the Caribbean has been tremendous for Western Union. Uh, you know, everyone says now when you're sending money, Western Unionize it. Yes. That's yes. that's because of the Caribbean, and it's it's you know it's our duty now that you you guys have contributed to us for us to give back. And I think the best way to give back is through education. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Mason. And is there anything that you want to say to a mother who is struggling with her child and, you know, don't know where to go, how to do this? Well, I'd say absolutely don't give up. Encourage your, your children to pursue higher education. Education equals economic opportunity. We all see that once you have a degree, your earning potential increases exponentially. And we're here to help. I mean, do visit the prideofthecaribbean.com website. Right for you know all the information that you'll need to be able to apply and you know don't think that you know you never win anything so you, you're not going to bother to yeah. apply i mean you'll hear stories from you know some of our recipients from last year you know their experience and how tremendous it has been to, in helping them to you know get over that hump right that's so sometimes that's all you need just getting over the hump to get you through the next year and you know now they're going to be graduating so don't give up it's your dream, pursue it, and somehow we'll make it happen. Well, thank you again, and God bless you, and we wish you all the best in this. And I'm sure next year it's going to grow. Absolutely. Next year, you know, things keep growing, right? right. Every year you have to do better than yeah. the year before. So for certain, next year we'll be back again, you know, with bigger news, more exciting news. Yeah. And, you know, who knows, the sky's the limit in terms of where we'll go next. Let me ask you this before you go. How many recipients do you have in the U.S.? In the U.S., I believe we had about 10 recipients. We had two recipients at the higher level, and then we had about eight others at, you know, more, not necessarily lower, but not as, as, as significant as the right. main winners. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're expanding this year. I think this year we'll have in all about 18 recipients. So we're, we keep growing. We want to broaden the pool. We want as to give as many people the opportunity to be helped as possible so we have tremendous partners this year and I just want to mention Walgreens because while Grace Kennedy is our partner in pretty much everything Walgreens is our partner particularly here in the US and in Florida in particular they have actually you know put money on the table to make all of this a reality so just want to say big thanks to Walgreens and you know next year we could be bigger and better with our Walgreens partnership or someone else. Well, or thank you. Else. Yes, thank you so much. God bless you. Well, welcome back to Get Vision TV. And we're here at the Miramar Cultural Center at the Grace Canada Western Union Scholarship. They are giving away money, 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 money. And we have the money lady with us. 
Miss Michelle Allen. How are you doing today, Michelle? I'm doing well, Michelle. <laughs> and namesake. Right. I'm doing very well. I'm very happy to be here today at the Myanmar Cultural Center, as you said. This is the last leg of our annual town hall forum. We started in New York, we then went on to Toronto, and now we're in southern Florida. So we're very excited to be here, where our guest speaker is the most honorable um, Prime Minister, former Prime Minister P.J. Patterson. The scholarship program, how, tell me a little bit about how you, you know, discern it, what's going on. Well, the scholarship program, Pride of the Caribbean for Western Union, is one where they'll be giving out scholarship to over eight um, persons or candidates um, going in undergrad. Um, they have also upped the scholarship this year to over to 50,000 U.S. Wow. dollars, and it's not only in the countries that GKMS operates, the nine markets, but it also includes Haiti. That is so amazing because, you know, just to know so many children are going to school, they don't know where they're going to get money from, they don't know f where food is coming from, but they're pushing. So for Western Union and Grace Candy to really partner in doing this is amazing. As someone who went to school and you know the hardships, what would you say to, to a student that's already in college but is struggling? Wow, you know, it's really hard. Sometimes you're facing these challenges and you don't know what to do, you want to give up. The first thing I would say, don't give up. Oh. You know, there's always going to be a way. And that's what these scholarships represent in terms of an opportunity for you to apply and possibly win one of these scholarships. So for anyone who's going through the struggles in terms of schooling, really don't give up. Um, find out about your community, what's right. out there, what aids are out there, and knock at every single door. And, and I'm sure one will open for for you. Michelle, I can't say more thanks to you because I know you continue to work hard, travel all over, push so that this will make, remain a reality because yes. we need this. Our definitely, kids need this. Definitely, and definitely. Um, my daughter is in college, yes. in, at, you know, in FAMU right now, and yes. it's hard. Yes. It is hard. Mom, my rent is due. Mom, mm -hmm. you know, it, it is It is hard. Yeah. And, that, and that's why, you know, persons will think you're just sending and receiving money as business people. We're just here um, reaping the, the rewards, the revenues, and the profits. But this is really a way for us to give back to the community so each time you're sending and receiving um, transfer it's touching someone's yeah. lives and this is our way of showing it's not just about the profit it's really about what's behind it as I said in an earlier interview today every remittance have a story and it's really what's behind that story and but by us helping these children to continue their education is one of the most profound things that we can do as, as corporate um, as a corporate entity well, thank you so much, Michelle. And we have with us Alison Icklin, who is from UNICEF Jamaica. How are you doing, Alison? I'm quite fine. Thank you for having me. UNICEF Jamaica, what part do you play in all of this? Okay. I, my role at UNICEF Jamaica is in communication, but I've had the benefit of experiencing this project up close that we have with Western Union. Mm -hmm. It's a first time partnership with Western Union, and the objective of it is to increase school attendance at secondary schools in rural Jamaica, Western Jamaica, we're talking St. James, Hanover, Westmoreland, where the attendance rates are particularly low. This is so amazing that you're starting now, they're, they're pushing it from the high school level right. so to make sure that children stay in school so they can at least qualify or, or apply for a scholarship. That's right. Well, you know, we have to start early and in the course of doing the research for this project because UNICEF was administering the program along with the Ministry of Education in Jamaica with the funds from Western Union and what we found from the research was that the blocks that were preventing the children from going to school were economics and we're talking about five dollars a day US and that's the cost of transportation and a meal to get to school and kids were not going to school up to three days a week because they couldn't afford that cost. Um, as you might know in rural Western Jamaica we have lots of families where the income is low right. and employment is seasonal. You have lots of even agriculture, fishing, the tourist industry and so they're not bringing in a lot of money um, and these are things that just were not affordable. You know, my ministry donated some money to my alma mater, Holy Childhood, two years ago. And when I went back, I felt so good because the PTA used the money for the student, some of it for the student who, she lived in the rural areas and they did not see her come back to sixth form. And they were like, why? And then when they went, they found her sitting over her pan, washing clothes, saying she don't have no money to come back to sixth form, meaning that she passed her, her CXCs, yes. but she did not have the required funds to come back to school. So they had to use some of that money to get her back into sixth form. So I know what you're doing is so important, and I thank you because 
you know, getting them to stay in school is important. Yeah. So we don't want to catch it at the end when, okay, by the time they get there, you have five people left. You need to really make sure that you're putting the programs in place for the students that are already in school. This is good. Thank, thank you so much. And just to say very quickly, uh, the example that I will talk about tonight, Grange Hill High, what they did, UNICEF went to the schools that we targeted. We said, help us with some ideas about how we can get the kids back. And Grange Hill really has been a model school that's in Westmoreland. And what they did was they set up a, a school garden. They did some poultry production on the school compound. Oh. They got the kids involved. and. So the produce that they're, they're creating on the school compound, they sell to the canteen, they put the profit back into the program so they can sustain it once the donor money has, you know, has dried up. So it's, it's a very proactive way of doing it and they're owning the process themselves and so we're very proud of some of those schools and I'll share some stories, personal stories of successes tonight of some kids who are back in school where they should be. Right. This is good and I thank you so much. I, I, I pray God's blessing on you because this is not easy. I know to drive back and forth in and around Jamaica is not easy but you will continue to press. And as you go, what would you say to a dad that has a child in school that doesn't even know where to get the next money to send them? I'd say honestly keep the faith, keep trying, um, be creative, look for any avenue and, and as far as possible send them as many days as you can because however far the money can stretch, let's you know try and make it stretch as far yes, as you can. Yes. All right? God bless you, Alison. Thank you so Thank much. You. And big up to UNICEF Jamaica. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, and we have with us Mrs. Anne-Marie Grant. Ms. Anne-Marie Grant. And she's here to tell us a little bit about what she does with this program. First of all, good evening and thank you for having me. I work for the American Foundation for the University of the West Indies. That's a non-profit organization. It's in the U.S. And what we do is really support UAE in terms of providing scholarships for students, helping to raise funds for different programs, getting equipment, whether it be computerized or other kinds of equipment. In general, just supporting the growth and development of the University of the West Indies. How would people know about this? Excellent question. Um, Regrettably, we are not as well known as we ought to be. It's something that requires a lot of work on our part, but um, I'm sure you have a large audience, so we're glad for the opportunity. <laughs> and so people can find out about the foundation, which is a 501c3 organization, right. which means that if you make donations to the foundation, it's tax deductible to the full extent of state and federal law. And they can visit us on the web at www.afuwi.org. That's www.a for American, F for Foundation, U for University, W for West, and I for Indies.org. There they will see about our programs, or scholarship opportunities. We have three kinds of scholarship programs. We have a designated scholarship, we call that, where if somebody donates $3,000, which is the cost of tuition for one academic year, the scholarship can be named in the honor of the donor or their designate. So if you want to make a donation and you want to name that scholarship for your mother or your grandmother, scholarship would be named in that person's honor. We have something called a dollar a day in which you can donate a dollar a day. So essentially $365, you can make it at one time or you can make $30 a month or $180 for every six months. Wow. There's a, and then there's just, we take donations for all different amounts, from a dollar up to a million dollars. You can just go on the website, press the donate button, and make a donation. And these proceeds for the scholarship goes towards helping young, bright, ambitious, talented students who often have to make a choice between food and tuition or going hungry for many, many days yeah. or yeah. missing an opportunity to educate themselves. And as you know, Education is the greatest weapon. So it's for university students, University of the West Indies students in and around the Caribbean. With, across the 17 right. countries of the university. The university is not only about Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad. The university is in 17 countries. Antigua, Barbuda, the Cayman Islands, Belize, St. Kitts, Nevis, Anguilla, Montserrat, um, B Bermuda, Turks and Caicos, just to name a few. St. Lucia, you know, across the 17 countries of the English-speaking Caribbean. So anybody is eligible for our scholarships, they need to apply to the, to the University of the West Indies mm -hmm. and um, submit their application and the university you know, will select accordingly. So we encourage everybody to support our young, bright Caribbean students. The Caribbean is where great minds are made and we have to, each one must help the other one. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. What would you say to a student as we close that, is, that really wants to go to the university but is struggling mentally? 
Um, I can understand and appreciate that challenge because if you do not know where the funds are coming from, yes. you really suffer from a great disadvantage because you're not, you know, you're not emotionally ready for it. But I would say you need to explore all of the scholarship opportunities that exist. The foundation provides scholarships for financially challenged students. There are scholarships at the university for students who excel academically. Um, you may not get it this year or the year after, but keep applying. Right. And, and keep letting your request for financial assistance known to the institution. They can't help ev everybody because about one half of the students who go to UWE now are in need of financial help. Yeah, at least one imagine, half yes. and three thousand US dollars is really a lot of money but keep 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 applying keep positive and the mere fact that you want to better yourself in a very positive way I think you know all other things will be added so keep 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 up the good work keep up the good work I know you're a smart and hard work and I really applaud you for doing this because and stepping up to the plate because it's so needed in this time you know I just came back from Jamaica my friend is actually in our final year at law school and I want to be give a shout out to Melissa and um, it's it's hard it really is hard and, and it is fair it is fair to say that the circumstances affecting our young people in the Caribbean in Jamaica across the Caribbean in Barbados in Saint, is far more difficult than it appears to be because yes. when you visit for vacation you don't see the underbelly yes. mm. of our country mm. and when we visit we spend time with our families and friends who are probably in similar circles but there are people outside of that who yes. really have the, and they're ambitious they're young they don't want to be idle they, they don't want to be truants you know they don't want to get into drugs and guns they really want to educate themselves and very importantly we need to develop confidence in our young people because they really do want to give back to the community, but they need to be given that fighting chance. And through, through programs like this that will tell people about what we do, we're hoping that we'll be able to help more students. So thank you so much and good afternoon to your viewers. We have standing with us one of the recipients of the Pride of the Caribbean Scholarship for 2014. This is amazing. I'm so happy for her. Tanya is here with us this evening to so just give us a little bit about her experience as a recipient and even the applying process. How are you, Tanya? Hi, I'm fine. Um, well, the, uh, the application process, it was a, a little tedious. Um, it was a lot of essays that you had to write. Um, it was about like five, I think, different like questions and you had to have like a real expanded um, <laughs> responses for each one. So it, it took a lot of time to really expand on everything and the questions that they asked. Um, the scholarship has meant a lot to me. It was able to reduce some of my costs for this upcoming summer for my classes. And, you know, it just definitely helped me a lot because being an out-of-state um, student, it's very costly to pursue your tertiary education here in the U.S. And it just meant a lot to me just by reducing those costs. And I'm def definitely thankful for the opportunity to be a scholarship recipient. How did you qualify? The qualifications was, um, firstly, you had to be from either like the nine countries that they had listed there, um, either your parents or you or from one of those countries. Um, my dad is from the British Virgin Islands, and that's where I, I grew up all my life. So that's one of the main qualifications that you, you had to qualify based on those nine countries. Um, and then you just went ahead and submit your application and fill out all the paperwork and uh, answer the essay questions and just submit it in by the deadline and you just had to cross your fingers and hope that you were chosen. And pray. And pray. <laughs> a lot of prayer <laughs> and a lot of following up and hey, did I win? Have you guys um, selected the winners as yet? It was a lot of following up as well with the scholarship. What are you presently studying and where are you going to school? I attend the University of Central Florida in Orlando and I am an accounting major. I'll be graduating in December 2015, so I'm currently a senior. Oh, yes. Good. Do you love school, really? Honestly, <laughs> I don't love school, <laughs> but I'm a very good student. Um, I'm very involved on campus. I served as the president of an organization. I'm currently the vice president of another organization, and I'm very active in the community, whether in the British Virgin Islands or here um, in the Florida area. I'm very active on campus, volunteering, being in leadership positions, and so I like that aspect of school. Of course, I don't like studying, but I still do it, so I'm a, a very diligent student. I currently have a 3.78 GPA, so. 
So we're shooting for 4.5. <laughs> well, you know what, Tanya? The greatest thing is that you are one of the scholarship recipients. Yes. And we're, we're just thankful to God for allowing that to happen for you. And the sky's the limit. But before we go, what would you say to a student who is actually in school right now and struggling with financial issues and emotional issues? Because you know how, the, how it is. Yeah. Um, I'll definitely encourage any student, first of all, you need to be able to tap into your resources. Yes. Um, you have to be aware of things that are happening around you. You have to use Google. Like, I know we use the internet a lot daily on our phones. Sometimes in my day, like, I literally just go and I, I'm, I search scholarships, whether it's just for Caribbean students or just African Americans or just being a, a female. I go out there and I research and just go and try to find opportunities um, for different scholarships there's actually uh, an app that you can download called Scholly mm -hmm. and it's a scholarship app and you can just like go and search different scholarships that you may be eligible for and that's for like high school students that's for current college students anywhere you know whether you're pursuing a graduate degree or undergraduate degree um, the app is called Scholly so you can like look that up and I'll definitely say, like, speak to someone if you have any, you know, issues, emotional problems. Just if you can reach out to, like, immediate family, try, like, your school um, psychologist or anything like that. A lot of people just, they keep things inside. And when they're doing school, it's a lot. Right. So you have to be able to find someone that you trust and that you can go out and, you know, just speak to them and, actually like get someone to listen to you so that you don't feel all alone because sometimes going through school it's a lot having to deal with school and then you still have your personal life so I'll definitely say just try to reach out to someone that you trust to just let them listen to your problems. Tanya thank you so much I wish you all the best as you graduate in December so that's not very far from here and the sky's the limit for you and um I know you're going to get a very good job in your field of accounting. Thank so God you. bless you and all the best. Thank you so much. Talking about scholarships, money, I have a money lady with us. So <laughs> you know how it goes. We love to speak to the people with the money. Paula, how are you doing this evening? I'm good. Really nice to be here in Florida this, uh, this evening. Very nice. Very nice to be here. All heap of people from the Caribbean are here. Good to have conversations with them this right. evening to hear what is happening with the Caribbean folks in Florida. First Global is where you work, right? Yes, I'm with First Global Bank. That's a wholly owned subsidiary of Grace Kennedy. Mm -hmm. I believe it is still the only wholly owned Jamaican bank uh, that exists as of today. Oh, that's good. So we really need to support mm -hmm. our Jamaican brand. Uh, yes, so First Global Bank is a full service commercial bank in Jamaica. Right now we have six branches across the island. Montego Bay, Mandeville, and we have four in Kingston. And we're actually opening another one later on this year. But you have to come to Jamaica for me to tell you that one. Listen, I'm an old workers bank employee, you know, so I know about banking. Is that right? Yeah. I did not know yes, that. Yes, yes, I worked at, I actually worked at Bank of Jamaica first, okay. and then to workers bank in the audit department. And the partner program at workers bank, I started that with Norma Russell. Very nice. Yes. So you can give me some ideas. Of course. <laughs> okay, good. We, sh we need to talk off yeah. air then. We need to talk off air. But yes, yeah. so, so First Global Bank is happy to have anyone here do business with us. Mm -hmm. um, we want to encourage the Caribbean diaspora to use their Jamaican banking facilities. One of the great things about First Global Bank is that we have an awesome online banking system, which means that once you have started a banking relationship with us, you can actually right. go online and just do your business from anywhere in the world that you are transfer money back to people in Jamaica you can actually transfer money from our bank to another commercial bank oh. in Jamaica right from your online banking system so you have bills to pay for somebody in Jamaica you want to transfer money to your relatives friends persons who are doing work for you it's very easy to do it with our online um, banking system in Jamaica how would you deposit money here though you can deposit money from here in Jamaica. You actually have to get the money to the to Jamaica, but you can send it electronically to Jamaica. So it's 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 right. it's easy. So you don't have like branches anywhere in the US at we right don't now. We have branches right now. 
right, that is that is it. We don't have branches in, in, in the US right now. Well, the fact is that we're talking about how to really develop our relationship with the diaspora. And we haven't defined yet how we're going to do it. So we're here creating awareness so that those who come to Jamaica can start a relationship with us. Or they can give us a call and we start business. So I'm going to give you my email address. So if anybody wants to shout me, call me, write me, paula.barkley, B-A-R-C-L-A-Y, at gkco.com. Drop me a line and I'll be happy to redirect them. Well, God bless you. Thank you for what you do. And I know you play an integral part in the scholarship program. And tonight it's just all about the money. So we're glad that you all, you know, just, just, just continue to help kids who are in need. Absolutely. We have a, in fact, First Global Bank has a big education program too, um, working with kids in the, at the primary school level. So we're very proud of that. And we're very proud to support Western Union in their education program that they have that they're going to talk about today. Yeah. Well, thank you, Paul. It's always a pleasure. God thank bless you. you. And all of, of course, we're talking money tonight, scholarships. We have the keynote speaker with us, none other than the right honorable PJ Patterson. And I have standing with me right now, Shauna, who is from Western Union. Oh, my God. I'm just going to ask her to just tell us about what she does. Michelle, how's everything? Pretty good, how are you doing? I'm wonderful, enjoying the event. What is it that you really do with Western Union? Boy, that's a tough question. I'll wash my basket and answer that. Um, but hopefully, succinctly, I'm the senior marketing manager for the Caribbean region for Western Union. And really and truly, my job is to make sure that our brand is on point. Right. Um, the business is good. Mm -hmm. um, and we manage that from a diaspora standpoint. Right. So not only am I responsible for about 28 countries in the Caribbean, um, English, French, Dutch, Caribbean, I'm also responsible for the diaspora, right? right. So wherever Jamaicans, Trinidadians, Grenadians may be, um, that's a part of my role to make sure that we continue to service them in their country right. that they're in, as well as sending money back home. Wow, in a nutshell. In a, in a nutshell. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't would, hurt to have the budget too. What would you say to a family that's struggling right now with their finances? You know, we're talking scholarships tonight, we're talking yep. money tonight. What would you say to them? Well, I think there's various aspects of struggle, right? right. Um, you have families who migrate to have better lives. You have families who put everything they have together to make up that money and send. Um, hopefully they're using Western Union they find our rates to be competitive. Um, and we work consistently to make sure that we're, in, we're able to serve our customers in that aspect. But also a good part of what we do is also financial literacy, right? So many people receive remittances throughout the Caribbean. Um, as you know, for the most part, the Caribbean is an inbound market. So they receive money from people overseas, the US, the UK, Canada. And part of what we do is try to help people to understand, save a little, right. you know, pay right. yourself first. Kind of the things that they teach us here in the States about 401ks and that kind of thing. But because those programs aren't necessarily applicable in the Caribbean, what we try to do is teach some of the same values. Right. So save a little first, don't spend it all in one place. Lord, you know, hopefully you don't have to call your sister again later yes, that yes. month to ask her to send again. But it really is a whole um, slew of hopefully what we have is solution and offerings to our customers who are able to really um, go through that struggle. Right. Um, Western is here with you. We're always here to help provide assistance, whether through scholarship, whether through anything else like that. We give lots back to the community and obviously this is what this event is about. Wow, thank you so much, Shauna, because yes, it's good to give back, especially in these times when people are struggling. So many people are going through the socioeconomic crisis that we're all talking about. But I'm glad that Western Union sees this as an issue and you're really doing something about it because many, many organizations say they see it, but it's a da 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 and they do nothing. Tonight is tantamount to say you are actually doing something. I'm with the person with the money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who handles the budget. You know, that's always the fun part, right? So, um, do you see yourselves, I know this year you doubled the scholarship amount. Tell right. us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So, in 2014, we gave away about $20,000 to a few winners here in the U.S. 
this year we doubled it um, and really and truly not only did we double it we expanded from nine countries to 19 countries that are eligible to participate um, and then also we also worked with UE to issue scholarships to students who are at attending UE as well so we're helping in the diaspora we're helping back home and obviously you heard some of the other things that we're doing, working with UNICEF and, and working at the primary level um, in all aspects to really help, you know, build our future and, and build our, our future PJ Patterson's, build our future Shaunas, yes, our, our yes. future Shauns and Mr. Masons and um, Mr. Don Webby's and those kinds of things. And we, we believe in education. Grace Hendy believes in education, which is great. Um, and it makes the partnership even much better. Shauna, I can't tell you thanks enough because, yes, we know you handle the ching ching but your passion is so important to what you do and to what we need you to do for us as the people of the community and for my viewers as well. So I just want to tell you thanks so much. Um, you know, continue to do what you do best, and Sean is a great guy. It's my second year interviewing him and covering this, so I just feel at home with you guys, and I just thank God for what you keep oh, doing absolutely. for our communities. Absolutely, and we're here to help, and you know, we're always willing to listen, and obviously your viewers can reach in to you, and you can reach in to us when they have feedback, when they have questions, when they have concerns we always want to hear that stuff because you know keeping our ear to the ground is is tantamount to our business and and this is why we do these types of things well yes and um I know that next year I already spoke it into being I decreed and I declare that we're gonna have twice the amount so we're gonna <laughs> but it's good that you know we can you could double it you know that is so good and I know that with what we're doing here in South Florida, we'll be able to do much more with you as partners. So we really thank you. Absolutely, and I'm so happy to be here. I'm glad to have partners like you guys. And, you know, the turnout tonight was great, and it really yes. speaks to the fact that the Caribbean community wants to be heard. Uh, they want to be serviced. Right. Um, and they want to be serviced by people of their own, right? Um, so hopefully Western Union's doing a great job of doing that. I know Grace Kennedy's also doing a great job of that. And, and you know, uh, hopefully your viewers know. Well, we see you again next year, I'm sure. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I'll be here, God's willing. God bless you. Right. And yes, the night has been a long, long night. But we just want to say thanks to Grace Kennedy. Here's a Mirage and her team did a wonderful job on tonight with this program here at the Miramar Cultural Center. We spoke to several of the leadership in Grace Kennedy and Western Union, likes of Michelle Allen, Don Webby. You know we spoke to Michael Wrangling, and we're just happy that Sean Mason and the team could have been minded to the point where they're giving out scholarships, and yes, it is true, they doubled the amount they gave last year, and they're actually widening this year the amount of territory that they're covering, including Haiti, so my Haitians, look out. We're just happy for what happened there tonight. We're just happy for the, 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 the information that we received there tonight, because now the scholarship Pride of the Caribbean is now $50,000. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you got to get on the web. You got to go and apply. Prideofthecaribbean.com. Go and apply because let me tell you something. We spoke to Tanya. She's one of the recipients and she's just like beaming with joy because of what the scholarship money did for her. So you heard it here tonight on Get Vision TV. You know how we do it? If you can't get it, you can't realize it. Remember now, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere because Get Vision TV is going to take you to bigger and better places in the world. God bless you all. Good night.